starting point is just to explain very briefly, as succinctly as I can, um, what the primary purpose of Yachad is. Yachad was established, as Shari said, some <coughs> months ago. And we are one of our primary aims is to galvanise large numbers of British youth to speak out in support of the creation of the Palestinian state and in, and in support of any of the occupation. Um, and coming from that starting point, I, I, I suppose the, the segue that I want to move into is one that says that I, th I think this is a very confused conversation, that there are three different things going on within any debate about BDS. One is about BDS as a tactic, one is about BDS as a movement, and one is about people's beliefs on Israel, Palestine, what should exist, what, sh what shouldn't exist, and where those borders are. In that context, uh, my understanding of this debate is actually the, about the BDS movement. Um, and the movement has three aims, and I just want to briefly go through them and, and talk about whether I think the boycott can be effective or should be effective in, end, in, in achieving any of them. So the primary one, ending the occupation. Um, my analysis is that just because you have more of something doesn't mean it's effective. So there might be more BDS today than there was three, three years ago. It might be growing. I would suggest that the occupation is not getting any better. It's in fact getting worse. And just to illustrate that, um, in 2005, and these are, these are stats that um, don't include East Jerusalem, there were 247,000 settlers in the West Bank, and today there are 310,000. Um, that's 63,000 more settlers since the call for BDS. Now, it strikes me that if your primary aim is to end an occupation, it's not working. Um, and I would also say, just purely from an economic point of view, it, it, Israel is not suffering economically from, from the BDS movement. It's not having a significant impact on Israel that it would stand up and say, this is destroying our economy. Um, I think primarily it's a counterproductive movement. I don't think it does anything to strengthen progressive forces inside Israel that are seeking to end the occupation. I think it strengthens a worldview which says people are out to get us, that this, is, this singles out Israel beyond any other regime, any other barbarous and murderous regime. It, it, it creates a situation where people feel that there is a movement that doesn't distinguish between Israel proper and over the Green Line, and therefore this has nothing to do with the occupation and everything to do with the existence of the state of Israel. It creates a, a, um, a feeling amongst sort of ac uh, in the academic sphere that actually the one place on earth where intellectual freedom and, and sort of the, the freedom of ideas is not allowed is inside Israel, and at best suggests that the um, a macar you know at worst a full blanket <coughs> boycott of academia is fine, and at worst some sort of McCarthy eyes that sniff out the good the good academics from the bad ac academics, and that decide based on their political persuasions. Who gets to who we get to speak to and who we don't speak to. Now, I'm I'm not sure who gets to be the judge of who's got the best politics, but it strikes me that there is no other place in the world where academics have to be held accountable for their government's actions, and that freedom of thought should should um, should preclude anything. Um, I I actually think that in any, if any if anything, the, boy, the BDS movement leads to a, a, an entrenchment of the right wing inside as well. I mean, we see that in the Knesset today that there is a severe anti-democratic bent that is being driven through that the fact that it is now a civil offence for Israelis living inside Israel is called the boycott West Bank settlement produce, that NGOs who are, who are the people that are, up, are <coughs> trying to uphold the rule of law inside the occupied territories, are campaigning to <coughs> the end of the occupation, are being called into committees of inquiry. The BDS movement provides the right wing in Israel with manna from heaven to continue, to continue with a set of policies which are doing everything to undermine the possibility of peace. And, and I think that the irony of the situation is that if you genuinely believe, and I question this view entirely, but if you genuinely believe that the onus of responsibility in this conflict lies 100% with Israel, then I'm afraid it's Israelis' hearts and minds that you've got to change. And the BDS movement is, is doing far from that, it's doing quite the opposite, which is that it's, it's telling them that we have no partners, people outside of Israel don't understand what's going on here, and therefore we will carry on doing what we were doing before, and we'll do it a little bit worse. And I think, it, I think the... Um, I think that the current political establishment is a prime example of that. Um, you know, as an aside, BDS also shuts down shuts down freedom of debate amongst people who are who are on the cutting edge of um, of, of critical discourse inside Israel. So, to give you a, an example, I don't know if you've been following, but um, an award was just given at the Sundance Festival um, film festival to a man who's just quit, uh, quit, um, created a, a documentary film about called The Law in These Parks, which is about military force inside Israel. Now, that film has, is gaining some, quite some traction inside Israel. I would question quite seriously whether it would if, if there was a boycott against the filmmaker. Um, I think that the, I think that the, um, bringing, that the notion that BBS can bring down walls 
literally and metaphorically, it's just simply not the case. I think it's important to divide in population. It, it, it does the polar opposite of creating conditions for peace. Um, and, I, and I think that the... Um, I, I think that the sort of uh, th this notion that if you if you distance yourself, you're more likely to create peace is, is quite simply not the case. And I think if anything, actually bridge building is conducive to peace. That's absolutely what was said in a Unison report when Unison went out on a delegation to Israel and Palestine in 2010 to, to basically find out whether there would be support for a call from Unison for a, for a boycott. The uh, General Federation of Trade Unions inside Palestine said, under no circumstances do we want to break from. Um, do we want to break links and hit the drip? Um, because actually, we, if, if, we, if we want to have impact and if we want them to change policy, they need to be around the table in the international conversation. And when you boycott, you don't have a seat at the table. And so there is no way to influence, there is no way to have a discussion of any sort. Um, one minute, just to touch very briefly on, on the other things, right of return and, and, well, I'll just touch briefly on the right of return. Second aim of the BDS movement, as I'm sure all of you know, is um, UN Resolution 194, Article 11, which is the right of return of Palestinian refugees to their homes, which was um, which is, was basically the armistice agreement after 48. Um, I would argue quite strongly that if, as a movement, you are trying to create a situation where the occupation ends, the very fact that that is an aim of the BDS movement suggests that actually what you're not trying, what you're trying to do, is not just end the occupation, but end the existence of the state of Israel as a Jewish state. Absolutely, it is the case that any resolution to the conflict, refugees, is, 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 will be at the heart of that, but it will be a negotiated resolution. And actually, suggesting that you can boycott Israel into demanding the acceptance of the, re of, of the millions of refugees that are now descendants of the refugees of 48 is quite simply not going to work. And what you are basically saying is you're destroying the possibility of, of, of Israel existing as a Jewish state. And so the challenge that I would level to anyone that is involved in the BDS movement is decide what you're doing. Are you trying to end the occupation? Are you trying to um, boycott Israel out of existence as a Jewish state? And, and do what, do what it you want. I, I'm not here to tell you what to do, but be honest about what you're doing. And, and I'm interested to know how you think any of those things will play out. It's my analysis that BDS is doing nothing to end the occupation. So if that is what you're aiming to do, I, th I think that you have to question quite seriously how effective the boycott is.